Hey guys, it's May May and welcome to part three. You've made it so far. If you watch part one and part two, thank you so much. We'll have those linked for you guys in the bottom and below so you guys can get a hold of those. But this is our envelope album and today we start doing the decorating bits. Now, I'm gonna do something different on this album I've never done before, but I think it will save us some time in the long run. A lot of times when you're making an album from someone that's like made a kit and you're just following instructions, all this part is done for you and you just follow instructions. But today we're gonna cipher together or decipher is how you say it. We're gonna figure this out together. So I know on some of my pages, I'm gonna want some four by six photos. But the issue is this, my four by six pages are gonna be pretty much all photo. Cause you see here, this is six and this is four. And the other thing is they're all gonna have to be portrait to fit here, okay? And I'm okay with having those in places. But the other thing I want is I wanna have some other sizes of photos. For example, a four by four would be really cute and give me place to decorate around it. And also, I don't know why I feel like I need to flip the page, but let's go here. How about some three by threes and maybe some two by twos, right? So what I think I'm gonna do is, first off, let me say this. I print my photos from an app called Print to Size. We'll link that in the description for you guys. It makes making your photos any size you want super easy. I do not know that it works on Android. There is an Android version though that I'll find for you and link it as well. So if you don't have an iPhone, but I can size my photos to whatever size I want. And those are the sizes I want to use. So here's what I'm gonna do first. And again, I've never done this before. I've, this has always kind of been the thing we do later, you know, putting our photos in and all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna kind of get ahead of myself. Well, let's just see what happens. So I've just gotten for myself some pieces of white cardstock, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some four by six mats. Now, four by six is the size of a printed photo, but I know I can, 99.9% .9 of the time cut a little bit off of that photo. So making these four by six is going to be fine. I just know that these are gonna hold my larger photos, okay? So I'm gonna cut this down to four by six, and this is going to be where I kind of bookmark for myself to add photos. Now, if you're making this album for yourself and you're just gonna be putting photos in it as you get them done or willy-nilly or what have you, you don't have to do this part, but because my thought process behind this album <laughs> is that I want to have it as a giveaway for the very first time we get to have an in-person crop together. So I want to make it where a person will know how to fill it out. Okay. So that's why I'm doing this. Now, remember I cut these to four. They won't make six, but they will make four by four. And you remember I wanted some pieces that were four by four as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm using every bit of the page to my advantage. Now remember, that was one piece of cardstock and I've gotten four photo mats. Let's do that same thing again so I can get eight photo mats. So I'm gonna cut down to four and then to four again. Again, guys, this is for someone who wants to know where their photos are gonna go and be able to lay out the mini album so that they kind of know this is exactly where photos are gonna land. Or if you're like me and you wanna give it away to somebody but you want them to know how to fill it up, this is a great way to do it. So now let's take some paper and let's cut some four by fours. I've got four of them here, but I wanna cut some more four by fours and I wanna cut some three by threes and some two by twos and we'll get right back together. So in total, I cut, I think four pieces of eight and a half by 11 white cardstock down. I started with my four by six, then my four by four, and then my three by threes and my two by twos. And what I did was just as my paper got smaller, I got as many as I could get, okay? Now what I wanna do is I want to stamp all of these to say, add photo here. I'm doing this, or place photo here. I'm doing this using my stamp set called Action, and this little stamp in the bottom corner, place photo here. This guy has gotten so much use over the years, y'all. I use it for everything. So I'm just gonna grab this guy out, and I'm gonna run through, and on every one of these little pieces that I cut, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp place photo here. So now you can see how this is for someone in particular, right? You can see that this is for somebody to be able to know I need to put a photo here. Now you can put the measurement in as well. You could come underneath here and write two by two if you wanted to. I'm not gonna do that because the person might not wanna put a two by two photo. They might have a different size they wanna stick there and I'm not gonna like limit that to 
whoever gets it. But if you're giving it to someone who maybe wouldn't know what to put there, you might just write two by two, three by three, four by four, four by six, and that'll be helpful. Now off camera, I've done something else. So I got all these guys cut and stamped, as you can see here. But I now want to make a mat to go around each one. And I wanna use black cardstock. I think I wanna use black. Um, I think it'll be pretty and neat and clean. So here's what I did. I counted all of them that I had. So I got six um, four by sixes. So that means I need to cut six four and a quarter by six and a quarter mats. Then I got seven two by two. So that means I need to cut seven two and a quarter by two and a quarter mats, eight three and a quarter by three and a quarter, and eight four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So what does that mean? What's a mat? Let me show you really quick. You're like, but you just cut mats. Those are all photo mats. They are, but I want to show you. So using black cardstock, I'm going to cut this down to six and a quarter first to start with, and then I'm going to cut it down to four and a quarter. And I'm going to do that. I need six of these, remember, because that's how many of the mats I cut. Now, here's the reason. If you don't mat it, and you don't have to, it's, it's just a look. It's just a look people like, okay? When you mat it, here's what you get. Your photos end up looking like this. It's almost like a little frame. Okay, so when you put this into your book, let me bring my book over and show you, you get this nice, clean pop for the photo, okay? Also, what this does is when the person puts the photo in, let's say they put a four by six photo here and they cover up that white, then there's a frame for the photo, okay? So I'm going to give a black mat for every one of the um, photo mats that I cut. So there's two, I need four more in that size. And I tell you what, rather than watch me cut all these, I will get them cut. We'll get right back together. So here's all of my photo mats completely assembled. And now we can take them to the book. Now, I don't know where they're going to land in here. I have no idea. <laughs> and honestly, I did these yesterday. So I'm kind of coming back in this morning. You'll see it's a wardrobe change. You'll probably notice throughout the video. But I think I'm going to just start like first. I know I have these tall mats. I think I'm going to just start putting them in the book. It really doesn't matter um, because photos can go anywhere in the book. If you want to take the time to kind of go through and kind of lay them out, see where they're going to lay first, you can. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just run through and put these in and see what I get. I think it'll be fun. I like this um, color pop here too. I like this black with this kind of salmon -y color. I think that looks pretty. So I got one in. Look, done. All it needs is some decorations around it. Now let's go over here. Maybe a four by four, since I've got such a big one. I don't know. That's one thing to think about too, because I have such a large photo here. Maybe I want to do two smaller photos over here. So maybe one here and one here. That would be cute, right? Since we have so many photos, let's do that. And this is all I'm going to do. Run through, place these guys in. So what we'll do is I'll record my process, let you guys see me do it. And then Tamitha will put some music on and let you watch the whole thing go. Then, of course, I'll come back at the end and we'll do a walkthrough to see where everything landed. I'm already interrupted. I want to show you something I just thought about. I think this will be cute. So I'm going to turn this one into a pocket. And so I'm just going to run some glue up three sides. So the two sides and the bottom. And we'll make this a pocket. There's no telling what all we can tuck in here. So I'm going to put it down toward the bottom. Place it down. And just when I go to glue it down, I'm going to push a little bit at the top. And that gets me a little lift. So easy. Uh, it makes it easier to slide things in. So just a little squeeze at the top there. And you'll see what I mean. Now I can get things in there super easy. But if you don't do that little squeeze, it's super tight and it's harder to get things in. So now we have a spot and a, and a pocket. So that was quick and easy. All right, we're gonna keep going. So 
So trying something different. I'm putting glue on two sides. I'm gonna put this one kind of in the middle and then I may put something long through there. I may not put anything, but I can kind of treat it like a slider pocket and slide something that goes all the way up and down. Again, I may decide not to do anything, just let it be a photo, but we'll see. So for me, this is definitely the way to go. Let me show you what happened. We made all our mats and now I've installed them. So check it out. Place photos, place photos, right? Look how we can just know exactly where photos need to go. Super easy by just kind of assembly lining them. Isn't that neat? Now, every spot, like see this didn't get a photo mat. That's okay. You might want a journal. You might just want to put some cutesies in there, right? Then we even have our pullouts up here. And even the pullouts got them. So place photo here, all of these places and here. Isn't that awesome? So let me just remind you, this place photo here business is only if you're giving this as a gift or you maybe want it as a guide for yourself. If you're just making this album, you know, as you go along and you're going to put your photos in yourself, you don't necessarily have to do all this part, but it's kind of neat to have it all set out for you. Okay, so now that we have all of our photo mats installed, it is time to decorate. I'm going to decide what's going on the cover. And the reason is I don't want to mess up because I'll tell y'all, I'll get to cutting things and forget that I haven't got my cover designed and have to come back to it. I really, really, really love this one. I think it works really well. I also love scrapping with my Nomi's. I don't know that that one would fit. I'd have to cut a lot of that off. It's cute. It is kind of cute though. But I really like this obsessive crafting disorder. I think that's cute too. Or I love to create. Hmm. This might even be better. Yep. Now that I think about it, that might be better. Let me cut these apart so we can lay them around. 
Now that I've got them cut apart, we can kind of look at them better. You guys, won't this be cute as a journaling spot inside, like maybe where I don't have a photo map? That'll be cute. All right, I know I'm not going to do so crafty because that makes this sort of a sewing book, and I don't know who's going to win this, right? This works, but let me go back to that other one. Look how cute. These are going to be cute just throughout the book. Again, knitwit is cute, but I don't want to make it one person. That's why I kind of like I love to create because I think anybody could use that or either scrapping with my gnomies. I don't know. We'll use that somewhere. All right, so let's work with this guy. So I was going to put like a closure on here, but I don't think it needs one. It seems to be doing really well. Nothing's really flying out. All of my pockets are going in the right direction where nothing's gonna just fall out. So I don't think I'm gonna put like a wraparound closure. We've done that so many times and I just don't think it needs it. So for today, we're just gonna decorate the front. This guy is definitely gonna need something to make it pop off the page. And I think I'm going to bring some of my inside design to the outside. So let's do the little scallop punch since we've done that throughout where we did it on our little pages. So let's try that. Look, it works perfect. And now I'm gonna need a piece of black to put around this. So I just happen to have a piece of the black left over from when I was cutting all my other mats that is the perfect width. And all I need to do is cut the height down. So I'm just laying it where I need it to go. Sometimes I do this. Do you guys ever do this and you don't even measure? Like, I don't like to measure anyway, so look, perfect, done. And now we have our little piece, and we can glue those together. Now, I think I'm going to pop them up, and I think I'm going to do my pop-up between the two of these. I think that'll look good. So, let's get some foam tape, some Scotty. Now, I'm not going to glue anything down to the page just yet. I find that sometimes I do that, and I mess myself up, because I might want to decorate behind this, and I think I do want to decorate behind it. So, I'm not going to glue this down to the page, but I am going to put these guys together. So, just take those away. And then put this guy on here like so. So, that way, I've got that. You know i got to put something in those corners, right? I could punch them, but I think I'm not going to. So, this I think will be so cute right here. But let's look and see if there's something I want to put behind it. A lot of times I like to use these little borders and things, but for me today, this one's too busy to go there. I don't think that's what I'm gonna use. Let's see if there's anything else I want to use from this page before. Just think before you glue everything down. So after some looking around on Pinterest, I saw a couple things I liked. Let's see how this works. So let me get my trimmer. Um, I'm kind of into this banner situation <laughs> lately. You guys are probably tired of it, but I kind of like it. So I'm gonna see how this looks if I cut some strips. This one is an inch and a half, and I think I'm gonna do this one. Oh, you know what? Let's use my new punch. Let's do this. So let's do one at two inches, one at an inch and a half and one at two inches, and we'll let the punch do the work for us. That'll be easy. You don't have to, we're just making a banner cut. You guys have seen me do that before. So you, if you just don't, if you don't have a punch, just make a banner punch, a cut with your scissors, that'll be fine. But check this out. If I do this and I put this guy in here and punch, it does the banners for me, that's cool. All right, let's do this one. Perfect, now, the idea I saw, ooh, I might use these too. Those are kind of cool, right? So let's leave those there. All right, so the idea I saw was one banner coming in from one direction like this, and the other coming in from the other direction, and I may not have made this one long enough because it would really come out like that. Well, let's move this guy over and see what happens. Okay, so I've had kind of a mooch around, and I first thought that I was going to use these banners, and I may steal, okay? And I have these two little pieces that were offshoots from them when I punched them. But <laughs> since then, I thought, what if I brought in a border punch and I kind of did this down the side to kind of give it like a little spine kind of situation and then bring this in, and then I may still use those. So that's kind of where I'm at. Covers are always the hardest for me, and I know they are for you guys too. Here's my suggestion for covers go online. I even, my favorite thing to do is look for card sketches or card layout suggestions, um, and then just try, just try to figure out how to make that work on your cover. It gives you a lot of inspiration if you look online for card sketches. You'll get more than you need, and that usually does it for me. If I can, um, if I can ever find one card sketch I really like, I can usually make it happen. That's kind of where this came from, there was something that had a little uh, scallop border to one side, and I thought that would be cute. So let me get this finished punched, and we will put it on our album. So 
So that's kind of my initial thought, is that guy there, this guy overlapping that. I like how that looks. And then I wanna see if I can use these pieces. I don't know why, but I really like them. And I think they should be usable. So let's just see, what if I did this like this and maybe added it here. Let's pick these up so I'm not sliding everything around. I don't wanna cover up all my scallops, which that kinda of does. Um, I don't know really why I want to use this so bad, but I've just got it up my crawl here, so let's see. Let's try it there. I don't know, I just don't think they work. We're not gonna do it. We're gonna use those for something else. Who knows where we could put those. Let's see if we wanna use these. I do wanna show you, I think this is cute together. If I layer this like this, or even if I flip this over like this, I think this is cute coming out the side of this guy for a little interest. So I wanna see if I want it to go there or the other side. Isn't that kind of cute there? And then I thought I might could use another sticker or something. I kind of like that. Let's assemble this. I really like how that looks together. There's more we can add. We can do some more little fancy things, but I like this little layout. I like how neat and clean that looked. I'm a big fan of clean lines. Y'all know how that is, but I try not to be. I try to mix it up, but I struggle with it. Let's see what we can put right down here. Okay, so I'm gonna use some stickers here. Since this says I love to create, wouldn't it be cute if I put memories on here? I know we like to create crafting, but also memories, right? So let's try that. So one of those banner pieces that I tried so hard to use, I trimmed down to make this little piece. I've got a little bit of fuzziness because I was having to hold it so carefully in my trimmer, but there we go, trim that down a little bit. I think this will be cute to put the little pieces on, put the memory word on. So I'm going to pick these up using my pokey tool, I'm gonna try to, and just kind of place them. Now I do not know if I'm gonna get these perfectly lined up like with each other, I can use one of the lines on the pattern paper, which is kind of cool. So there's my M. Now let's add this E. Notice that the E doesn't have a hole in it. I'm okay with that. I don't have to line that up or get that little bitty tiny hole out. Let's pick this guy up. Put him down there. That's gonna be cute. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna stick down these letters. Now my thought is this little guy will live right down here and just kind of be cute. And I like how that angle kind of matches up with that angle. That's kind of talking to my clean line heart. How about that? So I love that. So I'm gonna glue that there and then trim it off right at the edge. Now I can always come back and add more things stickers, things like that, but I think for now, I'm gonna stop here on the cover. I, well, I do wanna add some bling before I go, because I think that'd be cute in those little corners. So let me get this glued down and find some bling for it. I've got this lime green. I wanna see how it looks on here. I'm not sure if it's the right choice, but we'll see. That one's stuck a little funny. Oh, I think that's cute. I like the green, and I think it really sets off the page. So this kind of looks like we've bling riveted our little piece down. Get that right where I want it and add two more at the top. Cute, just a little something. We'll probably come back and add some more, but for now, let's get to the inside. All right, guys, this is where I'm gonna play with stickers and this is where it's gonna go kind of quick, okay? I want to use all these stickers to decorate and I'm going to use them in different ways on the pages. So like this little guy, I'm going to put maybe this little gnome. He kind of matches the page really well. Put this little gnome down here. Now here's the thing. I want to be able to put a picture behind this later, right? So I don't want him glued down just yet. So what you can do is use your powder tool or just some baby powder or some face powder or talc or whatever and take some of that sticky off. 
So just to show you, I did this little gnome guy the same way. I powdered him off in the back at the top, and then I glued him down at the bottom. But isn't he cute right there? So cute. And then we'll come over here, and let's see what we can put up at the top. This yellow, I think, would be cute to show this word create. Let's go right here and just put this word in. I think this will pop up here. That's cute right there. I like that little word. And then let's go to the inside here and see what we want to add to this little part down here. This little girl is adorable. She's like in, um, doing some embroidery. Let's see what else. Let's put some of this. We've got some little floss pieces. We can put those beside her down here. We've got this little piece of floss that we can put down here. So like those are her little embroidery pieces. Oh, and here's this little piece. Do I want to add it? Mm, maybe we'll put it up here. So let's put a little powder on it. And let's stick that one down so it can get a, a photo behind it. That's cute. Oh, so easy. I love it. Okay, next page. This is going to be cute because all the stickers will show really well on here. So this is my last little gnome girl. So let's use her. I'm going to get some of that sticky off of her hat there. And then put a little bit of glue on the bottom of her. Put her down here and then decide what I'm going to put around it. loving this cuddle bug machine so let's put a little cuddle bug machine in and how about this little paper trimmer because it feels very creative -y. how funny i'm using all the green stickers on the green background whatever that's what we do that's what i do i always tend to do that to myself now what i want to do is go back and add some of these little words how about i totally made this up here at the top i think that will be cute there and then i'm not going to add any stickers here let's go back and see where we can add words the little, the little sticker words, because I think they're so cute. Let's see if we can put share your creativity here. This will just make everything kind of pop, just adding the little pieces. Um, this is cute. What about get your craft on, create? That's cute, right? I like that one too. And then I'm going to skip this one for now. Let's go here. I've got words there. Let's see if we can put something on this one. Oh, this is cute. So, this one says, art is messy, and it's in white. So, that'll be cute next to that little gnome guy up there. And then this one's okay for me. Let's see. That's okay. Maybe some words down here. How about crafty weekend right here? That will be so cute to put a photo there of the crafty weekend and then I still have more stickers available to put on the like on the flaps and things on the inside but I want to show you what I'm going to do I told you guys this is going to be a giveaway right I'm not necessarily going to be keeping this for myself which I kind of knew that was going to happen because I want to give it away at our first um, in-person crop so I'm going to save some of these stickers for the person who gets it I do think I want to add this here I think this will be cute Y'all know I forgot that I made these pockets. I told you I probably would. I'm okay with it, though. I like how that looks. I like the simplicity of it. I just want to add that little um, wording right there. And let's see if there's anywhere else. Um, this little pic, this little stamp, I mean, this little sticker right here is so cute. It's got a little thingy in it right there. Let me get it out of there. There we go. I think this will be cute on the back. Made with love, because I did make this with love. Wouldn't that be cute? right there okay now i'm going to save the rest of those stickers for the person who gets it because i don't know exactly what they're going to want to do with it they might want to use some of those little tabs and things and i need to wipe my work surface off of the powder for this time that. you guys i forgot that i had this little guy i wanted to use i think i want to put it here so i'm going to lift this sticker up just on the edge and i'm going to put this down just underneath it so this little page kind of becomes a journaling page won't that be cute right there i think it will let's put that in 
I love that. And don't forget all the cut aparts that I can also give to the winner that I'm not going to use because they might want to use them. And if you're going to give this to somebody and they're going to be filling it in with photos and things like that, consider doing that. Consider giving them some of the leftovers because it's always fun to add more. It's kind of like getting a little kit for you to create and they'll enjoy that. All right, it's time to talk about our spine. Now, remember, I just made a solid black spine because I did not want to wrap this paper around it because this paper wasn't doing very good with the wrapping part, but that doesn't mean I can't put some here to make this cute. So let's see what we want to do there. So I think this stripe is cute. I like the pop of color. So I just cut a piece to go right on my little binder and it won't go all the way to the edge. I don't want it to do that. If it goes all the way to the edge, it might take a chance of getting torn away. So I'm just gonna make it set inside of here and give it about an eighth of an inch all the way around to kind of show. And see, that'll just nestle in. Isn't that cute? I love that that stripe. I thought that'd be cute to add some color to the end. And you could even add stickers or anything you wanted to here too. Let me see if this word inspire will fit. It seems a little big, but wouldn't that be cute? Oh, it's going to work. Okay. So let's count. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count my letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one is my center. So I'll start with that P and I'll just I eyeball everything, y'all. So I'm going to eyeball the center. This will be so cute on the spine. It'll look just like we planned it that way. <laughs> I did not plan it. Y'all know me well enough to know I didn't. It just worked. This will be cute on the shelf too. I love that these letters are very forgiving because they're not, they're very wonky. So they're easy to kind of put on here and there kind of willy nilly. So inspire is going at the end here. All right, it's time to put our spine on the book. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some glue and I'm going to cover this guy. Now I'm using wet glue and that was a choice. I was gonna use sticky tape. You could use a combination of both. That would probably be smart. But for some reason, I feel like wet glue is gonna be stronger for me here. All right, so I'm going to get this guy lined up, put it to the side here. I'm gonna press that into place and then I'm gonna hold it for a second and let it catch, and then I'll open it up and kind of squish between the pages to make sure everything is connected well. I'll do it like that, let's pick it up. And then I'll show you what I mean. I was just gonna go between the pages. Let me get my bone folder. So with my bone folder, I'm gonna just drop down in here and kind of press, and that will help everything to get connected as well. And again, this spine is really just for looks and a little bit of stability. It's not holding our book together at all. You saw our book stays together all on its own. Boy, did I put some glue on there. It's really seeping out the side, but that's okay. I want it to stay. I want it to be nice and sturdy. So now we just need to let that dry and our book is done, or at least it's done up to the point that the winner receives it and they finish it off. Now, I know and you know I'm a simple girl, but I love how this turned out. I think that this little book is so cute and it is going to be so fun for somebody to fill up and have to look back on for years to come. Super easy. This paper pad made it so fun and I just think it goes pretty easy. I made it in... I made it in, th uh, let's see, I made it in four video sessions. I'm holding that spine on, getting it nice and glued down. So this one probably will take you five to six hours total to make. I'm thinking that's about how much footage I had, um, including what, you know, I did off camera. So I would think, you know, five to six hours you could make this album for if you sat down start to finish. But it's definitely an easy weekend project. There you go, guys. This is our uh, what was this paper pack called? Why can I never remember? This one is called Crafting with My Nomies. So this is our Crafting with My Nomies mini album. And I cannot wait for our first crop in person. So this can be one of our giveaways. Um, so exciting. And hopefully that's coming soon, y'all. Keep praying, keep praying, right? All right, if you're making one of these, you know I wanna see it. So head to my customer gallery and share a photo with me of your album. Or, and also our Discord. You can share your projects on Discord with us too. We love to see them over there and you can chat with us and it's, it's a nice, fun little place to hang out. Um, be sure to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that red button. It's free, guys. It just makes it where when I post a video, it comes into your subscription feed on YouTube. And you can click the notification bell if you want notification from YouTube whenever I've posted a new video. I'll tell you to make it even easier, though. On Discord, I have a place where every time I post a YouTube video, it pops up there for you so you never miss one.
Thanks so much for being here and being a part of this three-part series. And until next time, bye now.